Hi, very welcome to this new edition of Inside Klanggestalten. A few months ago, I had the chance to talk to one of my well esteemed colleagues and we had an interesting chat. So welcome with me, Paul Bellin. Hello. Nice to have you here. I'm Gideon Baumblatt. I'm a maker in Berlin. You are in Frankfurt. Um, I'm German. You are French, I think, right? That's right. <laughs> how come you? Um, how come you became a violin maker? Um, when I was 15, I, I saw a program on TV that was about a violin maker, and I it just made click. I thought that's what I do. That's what I will do. That's it. Cool. And so that's what I did. <laughs> and then you then you went to. Newark um, to the violin making school in England, and um, from there on, I think you you worked in different workshops in in France, in Germany, back in France again, um, and you've become really one of the guys who's able to copy old Italian instruments and to make them look like old Italian violins, also, um, which I find very admirable, honestly. Um, so how come you got into that? Well, I've I, I've worked. I think seven years in, in workshops where, where we did a bit of everything, repairs, a bit of restoration, a lot of rental stuff, bridges without, without end. And seeing all these old instruments, nice old instruments was always, was always a treat. And it's really what I like to look at. And so it's what I'm trying to reproduce when I make instruments. I always wanted to, to make instruments anyway. Great. So, um... Last exhibition, which was actually in Dresden in, in the beginning of July, you told me of something that you've been working on um, over the past few years, which is uh, why I wanted to really interview you now, is um, that you're CNC routing. Um, and your, your wife, she's a restorer, Svante Hirschmann, so she's also in violin making. And the two of you, you've gotten into the CNC routing for restoration, which is... Um, really something many restorers do now. I don't know if you want to maybe explain a little bit to our public what this is, and then we're going to take it a step further, actually, so. Yeah, so it's something we started one and a half years ago about the, the principle, the, the, the point is to, to replace wood or to, to, when wood is missing, to, to replace wood without touching the, the original material as much as possible. So we scan the surface and the, the CNC router makes the exact fitting piece. So I'm, I'm gonna show you uh, some pictures. This is an old Italian violin. There's, there was woodworm there. So, the, so Svante opened it, opened the galleries a bit to be able to scan it properly. And, and this is the, the matching piece that the, that the router made. And this is the, the finished part, where the, the piece is glued and it's worked down. So there's just as little original wood taken off as, as possible. And then you can just glue it in um, without any ex extra fitting, right? Or is this... Yeah, yeah it's, it's precise enough for that, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. But you've, as I mentioned before, you've taken it a step further. Um, and you've, you are using this router now for your new making, since you are concentrating entirely on new making. Can you show us a bit what, what you're using it for? Sure. The, well, the scanner, you can, you can use it if, if you're good enough. It's not so easy. You can, you can use it to, to scan all violins. This is a, a scan of a Guadagnini that I'm copying now. Um, it's, you can get really a lot of information. So, for example, there I, this is, so the, the full violin is scanned and you can use, you can slice it and this is the outline of the ribs just under the front. So it's very practical if I want to make a new front, uh, if I want to make a, a copy, I, I will use this to make the top part of my mold and I will make the same for the back and make a, a three part mold to have the exact same outline, not yeah. of the front and the back, but of the ribs. So if I start from, I, I get more interesting informations, really. And the same way I can, I get the slice there, uh, sorry, with the arching, but you can see there are the ribs, how you can see the distortion of the ribs. 
So making the, the front and the back the same wouldn't, wouldn't really work properly. You can see how different they are. The, the front is much wider there in the C bar. So this is, this is very interesting for that. Um, but if you don't have a scanner, you can also prepare parts on the computer and, and, and make them with the, with the CNC. So the first thing that comes to mind, it's what we all love making, fingerboards. We buy them pre-routed. Um, like 15 years ago, we bought like 400 pieces like that. It's a lot yeah. of work to, from that to a, to a finished fingerboard by hand, it, it's, it's a lot of work. It's messy, it's dirty. It's, you have to sharpen the plane several times. So if the machine can do it, it's, it's pretty good. So, so I draw the model on, on the, there in a, in a software and the, and the machine just mills it to my exact specification. And I don't have to. I don't have to worry about the size, the the curves. I know they are. They are all perfect, just how I want them. And then all you have is there any finishing then to do still? I guess um, the sub top surface isn't. The like... top surface. I'm going to try to show you. There's. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. There are a few lines from the, from the tool, but I think I could I could make that a bit better. But it's. It's a bit of sending. It's uh, you, I don't need to plane it again. It's minimal. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a big time saver. But um, yeah. <laughs> and do you also do like um, I on the actually on the box? Do you have things that you do with with the router? Do you do archings? Do you do um, scrolls? No, I don't do archings or scrolls because I I like doing that myself. I do I I do um, the rough arching of the of the back sometimes because it it's also hard work and I'm not getting younger sometimes the joints are a bit painful so I'm having to to let the machine do that what I do is little parts like um, I show you another video so this is this is what what the machine is doing it's it's an ebony crown most old violins have have it uh, from restorations when the neck has to be newly fitted sometimes the the button becomes a bit a bit damaged okay so i do that on my instruments and it's it's something quite difficult to to fit properly and and while the machine i i it's my drawing so I, it's not like some generic stuff it's it's just how i want to to have it done i wouldn't do it any different by hand the 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 shape would be the same just like that, I'm I'm absolutely sure that it fits 100%. So it's more stable and. So you actually also do the ebony part, then the matching part, and since the those designs completely go with each other. Yeah, of course. Okay, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> so then, also the gluing is better, even though the I mean that's still discussable huh? somehow the because ebony and then you have the yeah but it's it's not any different if you do it by hand so yeah. since That's since true. it's my drawing it's i i wouldn't make a different shape if i were to do it by hand so okay it's okay <laughs> yeah nice so One interesting thing too is the for the bridges this is uh, the bridges you also do the bridges so yeah, yeah. So you don't buy blanks anymore. I mean, you don't buy buy the pre-routed blanks anymore. Oh, no, I buy blanks, and I, I I route them. So I I show you also. Yeah. It's the same program, um, but this is my bridge design or one of my bridges bridge designs. It's it's really cool because um this bridge fits one particular violin I, I made and i i used it to to make several bridges that all had a little difference it's very easy to change the design look and you also have the like the belly or the the arching of the yeah the belly the bridge. i can do too this is this is my design for the belly and okay yeah so you can basically reproduce the same bridge 
and then fit it on on the one particular violin with very little extra work yeah you even have the nicks actually in there already yeah yeah the the string height is, is finished in this case because i fitted the the this bridge to one to one particular violin where i wanted to to experiment a bit with different different models so i made eight bridges with different with a, a, a tiny difference every time to see what what it changes so this one has the the ears a bit more open this one i think it has the the feet are smaller the inside of the feet are shorter is shorter um this is the model i think it's Florian and leonard to develop that oh yeah you copied so, that okay you copied that <laughs> Marcel Richter is Florian Leonard, yeah. yeah. And what's your experience? Is it what direction does it go sound-wise? Uh, it doesn't. It didn't work at all in my violin. It, oh it no! Very tight. So no. what was your what was the end result sound-wise? Uh, I mean, what was the best working bridge? Uh, the best for me was a very very classical bridge. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah. So so something like Hill Beers style. Well, pretty much. This one with the ears a little bit more open and the, the heart a little bit also more open. I think maybe the feet a bit a bit thicker also. Okay, yeah, you have a lot of wood above the heart, but I'm also going that direction these days. Yeah. Um, and so, but you've, did you try those bridges then with, with, with a professional violinist or? Yeah, a customer of mine came and we spent a couple of hours trying and, and I, I changed I could change the bridges very quickly because they all they all fit the same way the strings the string height is is the same the string the curve is exactly the same so there was only every time only one one small difference did you have them all from the same tree basically the blanks also I don't know if they are all from the same tree but I asked uh, I asked Nicolas Despio to send me 20 blanks of, of the most similar wood uh, that, okay. that would find and yeah. that's the type of wood that i like anyway for for my bridges so okay so that's that's all right yeah i guess that's also a big advantage then to have similar similar wood if you had your own tree and would make your own blanks to take it a step further then then it would be like the perfect world but then maybe it would be the wrong tree for this particular yeah. violin so ooh la la it's <laughs> endless no because then if you move the sound post, maybe another bridge would sound better in the end. Yeah, there's so many factors. That's that's why it was interesting to, to just change one one thing at a time to make sure that there's only one one thing that changed. And we could just come back to the previous bridge and then it's not. And you can try when you have a bridge on, you can try to cut a bit of wood off to, to see what difference it makes, but you can't put it back. So. Yeah, I could just swap the bridges and, and, and go back to to the one before to make sure that I liked it better or yeah, to make sure that I heard what I heard. So are there any other things that you do with the router? I do neck grafts. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but only on your own scrolls or also without scroll, with old scrolls? No, with my own scrolls. Uh, you, can uh, you show uh, us one or you have a video of something yeah that's one i made yesterday it's it's not as fast in in real life <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah this is really fast <laughs> no the whole this takes about 10 minutes okay and you always do neck rafts in your copies yeah, I always do. Uh, unless I, if I don't make neck grafts, then I, I I put pieces at the neck root to to make it look like it was an, an original neck, like the the old struts that have still the original necks. They have the the rest of nails and some rust and then some pieces fitted by Guillaume. And <laughs> I okay. do that sometimes if I feel like it. <laughs> okay, so you're really going for it. That. It's small details that I that I enjoy. It's for fun. Really. It makes yeah. it doesn't make sense sound wise. It, it doesn't change anything. Yeah. Neck grafts I like because I, it allows me to have two different types of wood, and I think it 
adds a little bit something exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Cool, amazing. Is any? I mean, does ever go something wrong with? Um, do you have any accidents? Sure. Well, Minecraft, for example, this is this is one of the first ones I did, and it moved and it started mm -hmm. eating through the through the scroll. So. But this, so in this case, the scroll was finished. So it's actually, it's pretty annoying. It's a couple of hours, uh, but it's like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we actually yeah. asked around um, to some to some colleagues and and clients also um, if they had questions. Um, so one was, um, what uh, what I mean, if this is normally handwork handmade instruments um isn't this becoming then like a serial machine-made instrument if you i mean the more you introduce this the more the danger i see oh. well first of all we're not we're not talking mass production production here i'm, I'm making like seven instruments a year it's um, i'm making most mostly stuff by hand and I like I like making different instruments every time anyway, and if if I have to to set up the machine to to make the arching and the efforts and the puffing and everything every time it's it's just going to take too long and it's going to take all the fun off away. So there's no point in doing that. But you're restrained from doing certain things with the machine that you think that stylistically are important, or. No, it's not like that because the machine does what what you tell it to do. If you, if it's if it's the arching that you think is is right, then in the end there's no difference if the machine made it or or you. Except that the fun you didn't have working on the arching. It's, it's something that's that's very important for me. So I wouldn't let the machine do it completely. But it's 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 the design I want. If if it's if I hold the gouge or if I hold the machine doesn't make so much difference in the end and handmade doesn't mean it that it's well made and machine made is, doesn't mean it that it's that the quality is bad yeah that's also somebody asked that um i mean that's really something um because then everything tends to look the same um like like i was just thinking about your buttons now you have probably one button design and every button will then look the same, but then you could say this is Paul Bilan style. But if I was to make the button crowns, every one would be slightly different. So there's this individuality somehow you could say gets lost. Yeah, sure. You would do it. Every button you, you make would be a bit different, but I do anyway, when I make instruments, I do my buttons always more or less the same size. And, uh, and the button, the crown is positioned slightly different, differently every time. And it's the, it's, it's the design I want. So what the result is what I actually wanted to start with. Just there are maybe less, less mistakes, uncertainty. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, there's welcome. one last question that um, you have to answer also, um, since the next Klanggestalten exhibition is coming up in a year in most likely in October in Berlin. Um, this dates will be published soon. What are you planning? Um, do you have, you have plans already of what you'll present, what you'll make for that? If I manage, I would like to bring a cello, but nothing's sure. And well, probably one or two violins anyway. That's great. Yeah, I remember your cello from last time. That was really cool, Strat, Strat model. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well then, thank you for your time and um, you're welcome. See you soon. <laughs> yeah, see you soon. Bye bye. Bye.